Hey everyone, this video is for you if you're interested in the new open model by OpenAI called GPT OSS. First things first, what is this? This is an open source model, meaning that you can run it locally on your system. You don't need to be online. It can run locally on your computer and you can run a model that's very, very good. So if you ever find yourself stranded on a desert island and you're like, oh, I really need my AI. Well, here you go, you can do it. So there's two models. There's one called GPT uh, OSS 120B and the other one's 20B. Uh, this is just the size of the model. Um, and basically this one's for if you have like a really crazy computer, which means you probably don't want to watch this video because you already know how to do all this stuff or you run a data center. And the other one is if you just want to run it locally on your computer. It's on a place called Hugging Face, which is really just a website that hosts a bunch of these AI models and they make it really easy to download it. But there's an even easier way than that. There's a website and an app you should check out called LM Studio. Now this is only if you have a Mac. The cool thing about it is that it runs on Mac Silicon, which means if you have one of the M series processors on your computer, then you could run this model directly on your computer. It's totally free, easy to use, and you really don't need to be an expert. So I recommend you go, you download this. Once you've downloaded the package on your computer, just double click the package and you'll get a window just like this. You install it like any other application. You just drag it to your applications folder and drop it there. Okay, once you've installed it, you'll be presented with a screen to download your first model. You'll see GPT OSS 20B is the top one presented. It'll probably prompt you just to download that. Keep in mind, again, this video is just for Mac. So if you have a PC, this can still work, but then you have to get into things like making sure it works with your GPU. With a Mac, it just works on the M processor, which makes it super easy. This is an M1 MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of memory. If you have 16 gigabytes, which I tried on my Mac mini, it will not work. It's too big. So as you see, the model is 12 gigabytes. So it can't fit the whole thing in memory and still have enough memory to work on the machine. As you see here, it even says likely too large, but it does work. So that's sort of pushing the limits. So once you have it downloaded, you have to mount the model, meaning it has to put the thing into memory. If you go here, I went to the little gear in the bottom right, there's a thing called hardware and it'll show you how much resource it's using. And right now the resource monitor is showing the model is not in memory, it's not using anything. Um, and so that's because it's not loaded yet. But once we load the model, we click here, pick the model to load, which again is the only one I've downloaded, and then it'll load it into memory. On the bottom right, you could see a utilization, which shows you how much RAM, 11.56 gigabytes, and how much CPU usage, zero. So it is now loaded into memory. If we go back to that monitor over here, you'll see it's using 11.56 and zero CPU because it's running all in memory. Make sense? Cool, so let's create a new chat. This looks very similar to ChatGPT. And I could just say, hello, you are the new model from OpenAI. This is my first time saying hello. Hope you are well. And that's a stupid, but you'll see it runs. It thinks it's a thinking model. You can see what it thought. Just greet politely. Hello, thank you for the warm welcome. Now, so the thing is, if I wasn't connected to the internet and this is all I had, then I would have a very impressive model that I could run locally. So um, let's do something interesting. Let's say um, I'm thinking of a number. It is 22 sevenths. What is the significance of this number? So if anyone remembers geometry, it's pi. And it gives me a whole breakdown in history of pi. And this is running locally. So it's basically like a lot of the power of ChatGPT, OpenAI condensed down into a model that you can run locally on your computer. And that's it. So from this point on, now you could do it. You just need to make sure you have a, a uh, an M1 Plus processor with at least 32 gigabytes of memory. You probably need enough hard drive space to download that big of a model. But from here forward, we're just going to do a couple quick tests. So I'm going to show you what I can do. Okay, now it's time for something a little bit harder. Um, first off, there's a setting here you should probably know about, which is reasoning effort. Um, it was default to low. We're going to set it to medium. And I wrote this prompt already. What I'm asking you to do is create a single HTML file that replicates the iconic matrix digital rain effect, just like a screensaver. 
but doing it uh, on the web using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They gave it some requirements, you know, black background, neon green text, blah, blah, blah. Um, it told how to do it, use Canvas. All the code should be self-contained in one HTML file, no external libraries, etc. So I will run this now, and you see, because it's set to media, it'll take a little bit longer. And it tells you the token count is 294. So here we go. So you see the context, by the way, at the bottom here is 8.8% full. And now it's going to go through thinking, this is going to take a while, but basically it has to think through all of the steps involved in my instructions. As you can see, it did a bunch of thinking. It thought for 40 seconds here. Um, you could see its thought process. And then at the end, it spit out this HTML file, which has all the JavaScript and everything for the animation that I need. And it says what the file does. So the entire thing um, was 2,088 tokens, 23.39 tokens per second, which is like very slow relative to what you would see on a model like hosted in a data center, but still it's running locally. So I'm gonna copy this code and we can see what it does. So now I'm just pasting the code into BB edit. It's interesting, the character set it shows here. Some very interesting characters. In addition to normal alphanumerics, I'm gonna save this. Okay, and now we're gonna run it, see what it does. I'd say it's an epic fail, it doesn't fall. So I'm gonna have to give it some feedback. All right, no text is falling when I run this. Can you double check to see if there is an issue? Okay, so it thought for 37 seconds. The TLDR is it thinks it was the Japanese character set that was the problem. Uh, the Katana characters. Um, I don't remember where it said that, but basically it's in there somewhere. So as you see, the character set is just alphanumeric and normal symbols. Okay, it ran. Let's see if it works now. Copying this, putting that in BB Edit, saving. Now we go into the browser. Oh, it's much better. All right, it's closer. Not bad. So that's pretty good. So that ran locally on my computer, my M1 Mac, nothing special, and it's half decent. So with enough refining, I could make it good. Um, so that was a good test. Okay, well, hopefully that was a good look at the open model from OpenAI. I'm super stoked that they finally came out with this model. There's been a lot of controversy around it. A lot of people have been criticizing OpenAI for not living up to the word open in their name. So it's really nice that they've come out with a very modern uh, model that's available for everyone in the world. I think open models are super important because if the only people who have these models are the megacorps, then I think AI will be highly controlled. So it's really good that there's some models available for the general public. I think it's very important for innovation and competition and just general freedom for the world. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Please be sure to follow me on X. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. That helps the channel. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.